Hi students, this is Mrs. Foy, and today this is a little screencast on how to calculate average atomic mass. So we have learned that atoms are made of three subatomic particles, right? And those subatomic particles are neutrons and protons and electrons. Only two of those subatomic particles actually have mass. An electron has a very, very tiny mass, and we'll talk more about how scientists have calculated these very small masses, but it is really so small that we basically say it has no mass. So the only two subatomic particles that have mass are neutrons and protons, and we say that they weigh one AMU. Now charge is a different thing, and we've talked about charge, but no, we're not talking about charge right now. We're just talking about the mass. So we have talked about the atomic number and the importance of the atomic number, and we've talked about the mass number, which is the number of neutrons plus protons. But we have not yet talked about how you get this number at the bottom of the periodic table that has a bunch of decimals, and that is the average atomic mass. And so the average atomic mass is a weighted average of all the isotopes of that element in the universe. So what does that mean? Well, I've got some pennies with me today, and these pennies um, are the same. They're all pennies. But if I weighed them on electronic balance, they would weigh a little bit different. This brand new penny from 2010 is actually made of a little bit different material than this really old penny from 1982. And so even though they're a penny, these are going to have a little bit different masses. Some are lighter pennies, and some are a little bit heavier pennies. And that is just like atoms. So we know that in the universe, there are different atoms of the same element that weigh a little bit different. That's what an isotope is. It's going to have different numbers of neutrons. And so what we do to get the average atomic mass is we take a weighted average of all the isotopes and how common they are in the universe. All right, so here's boron. Boron has two naturally occurring isotopes, boron-10 and boron-11. And it tells you the exact atomic mass of those two isotopes of boron. But then it says that 20% of the isotopes in the universe are actually boron-10, and 80% of the isotopes of boron are boron-11. So if I had a big atom net, and I captured a bunch of atoms of boron, in the universe, and if I looked inside my bag of all the boron atoms that I collected, 80% of my boron atoms would be the heavier isotope of boron-11, and only 20% would be boron-10. So do you see why that mathematically it's not correct just to add the masses of boron-10 and boron-11 and divide by 2? Because the boron-11 isotope is much more common than the boron-10. So what we do is we take a weighted average. And the way you take a weighted average is you take the percent abundance of that isotope and you multiply it times its actual mass. All right, so here, let me give you an example. Here are the different isotopes of magnesium. So there's a magnesium 24, a magnesium 25, and a magnesium 26. Each of these are magnesium because they have 12 protons. You see up here they have 12 protons, but they're going to have different numbers of neutrons. And here is the mass over here, the exact mass of these different isotopes. And here it's giving me the percent abundance. So magnesium 24 is 78.99 percent of all the magnesium atoms in the universe. Magnesium 25 is 10 percent of all those atoms, all those isotopes of magnesium in the universe. And magnesium 26 is 11. So what we do is we take the percent and we actually uh, change that to a decimal before we do this math. So we multiply the percent or change it to a decimal, multiply it times the mass in each case and add it up. And then we get this number that is the average atomic mass of magnesium. And that is actually how we do it. So um, in just a second, I'm going to have you click on this link right here and go to another website that shows you how to calculate it. But I'm going to show you another example now of how we would do it with boron. Okay, so here are the isotopes of boron, boron 10 and boron 11. I have the actual mass of this boron, 
Okay, so this is the mass of this version of boron, and this is the mass of this version of boron, and you can see that they weigh a little bit different. This guy is 80% of the isotopes of boron are the heavier version, and this guy is 20. So the math is very simple. I change the percent um, into a decimal, so 20% is 0 0.20, so you divide by 100. Multiply times the mass, and then add it to the other isotope. So I take 0 0.80, and I got that from 80%, I just change it to a decimal, times the mass of that isotope, and I get the number 10.8108. If I round that to correct sig figs, in this case it's going to be 0 0.001 of an AMU, because that's the lowest sig figs that I have here, and I would get 10.811. If I look on my periodic table at boron, I see that the red number is 10.8. One, one. That is the average atomic mass of boron. So now I'm going to have you guys calculate uh, and do some practice problems, and you can watch this recording again if you need help.